Week 7. Day 43, On Making Continuous Efforts. Genius is often only the power of making continuous efforts. The line between failure and success is so fine that we scarcely know when we pass it, so fine that we are often on the line and do not know it. How many a man has thrown up his hands at a time when a little more effort, a little more patience, would have achieved success? As the tide goes clear out, so it comes clear in. In business sometimes prospects may seem darkest when really they are on the turn. A little more persistence, a little more effort and what seemed hopeless failure may turn to glorious success. There is no failure except in no longer trying. There is no defeat except from within, no really insurmountable barrier save our own inherent weakness of purpose. Albert Hubbard I'm an avid rock climber. In rock climbing, particularly when climbing long routes, your forearms can get pumped to such an extent that you can no longer hold on to the rock. Climbers afraid of failing will often ask their belayer to take in the rope so that they can rest and try again with renewed strength. While this strategy is good for learning how to climb a difficult route, sometimes it costs a climber an on-site, a clean ascent with no prior practice of the route, or a red point, completing a route without resting on the rope, because they give up too quickly, right after they start feeling overpowering discomfort. Even when you can barely hold on to the wall, often you can still perform one or two moves more, and those moves may be enough to upgrade your position to a rest stance where you can safely recharge and continue climbing without resting on the rope. It's the same with many other areas of life. You believe that you can't go on any longer, that your self-discipline has run out and it's time to throw up your hands in defeat, while in reality, Persisting just a little bit longer is all that separates you from success. The next time you feel like giving up, persuade yourself to push a little bit longer. Chances are, success is right around the corner. Day 44, On Optimism Optimism is the faith that leads to achievement, nothing can be done without hope. Helen Keller A positive attitude is essential if you want to build self-discipline. What's the point of denying yourself instant gratification if you don't believe that you'll get a greater compensation for it in the future? If you suffer from pessimism, realize that along with improving your self-control, you'll need to improve your ability to see the world in brighter colors. Three easy steps you can take today to become more optimistic include 1. Express gratitude for what you already have. If you can't be happy with what you have today, you won't be happy with what you have tomorrow. 2. Reframe negative events into opportunities and lessons. An event is bad for you only if you decide it is. Think of it as a lesson or an opportunity to change your life, in order to give it a positive meaning. 3. Surround yourself with positive input. If you only read fear-mongering news and hang out with pessimistic grumblers, you'll have a hard time exhibiting optimism. Day 45, On Honesty I hope I shall possess firmness and virtue enough to maintain what I consider the most enviable of all titles, the character of an honest man. George Washington For many people, one of the hardest challenges for their self-discipline is the resolution to stop lying. We constantly encounter opportunities to lie wherever we go and whatever we do. It seems it's even socially permissible to lie a little, whether by telling a white lie, making yourself look better on a resume, or tweaking your height, weight, and financial situation on online dating sites. As the old saying goes, honesty is the best policy, and it's also one of the best ways to strengthen your character. It's one thing to deny yourself a piece of cake. And it's a completely different thing to tell the truth when you think it will make you look bad or threaten the relationship you have with someone. Yet, over the long term, the truth always emerges, and if not, it still eats away at your conscience, so why postpone the discomfort you'll eventually feel anyway? Vow to tell the truth no matter the circumstances, except for extreme situations, such as your life being in danger. 
Please note that being honest doesn't mean that you need to share everything about yourself with other people. That telling them, I don't feel like answering that question, without giving any justifications, it's your right to not explain any of your decisions, is a simple way to remain honest when a person asks you a question you normally answer with a lie. Day 46, on looking fear in the face. You gain strength, courage and confidence by every experience in which you really stop to look fear in the face. You are able to say to yourself, I lived through this horror. I can take the next thing that comes along, you must do the thing you think you cannot do. Eleanor Roosevelt Self-discipline is a lot like dealing with fear. When you face temptations, look them straight in the eye and send them packing, the next time they appear in your life, you'll be able to say to yourself, I managed to overcome them once. I can handle them this time as well. The more times you successfully overcome the temptations, the easier it will be to handle them again. Regular practice will make you less susceptible to temptations and even more likely to ignore them, just like looking fear in the face will make you more likely to act in spite of it. Granted, it's not that with enough experience, you'll become unconditionally self-disciplined, just like you won't one day stop being afraid of anything. Just remember that each situation that tests your resolve is another experience from which you can draw inspiration to overcome future challenging circumstances when they occur. Day 47, on the folly of loafing around. The loafer believes he is enjoying life, but sooner or later he must face disillusion. Fausta Assertion Yanni Since self-discipline shines in the long term, and often doesn't seem to provide any benefits in the short term, you may be tempted to believe that people who are loafing around have it better. While you're watching your finances like a hawk, they spend money they don't have and show off with all the new cool gadgets. While you're eating a salad and washing it down with a cup of green tea, they're eating a bag of delicious potato chips and gulping down sugary cans of coke. While you feel like throwing up during your workout from trying to, to squeeze out one more rep, they squeeze more mayo out of the bottle to put it on the french fries they gorge on while watching their favorite TV shows. It might seem they have it better, but sooner or later the person exposing himself or herself to discomfort for the sake of achieving their long-term goals will come out on top, while the people loafing around will get to feel the negative consequences of their laziness. Irresponsible spenders will realize they're on the brink of bankruptcy. Potato chip addicts will be diagnosed with diabetes. The inactive TV fans will start taking hypertension medication. You, on the other hand, will look back at your past sacrifices and smile, happy that you've never succumbed to the temptation to take it easy and loaf around. Day 48, On the Deadening of the Soul most of us dread the deadening of the body and will do anything to avoid it. About the deadening of the soul, however, we don't care one iota. Epictetus It's curious that millions of people all over the world spend countless amounts of money and time to improve their appearance through the use of cosmetics, plastic surgery, expensive clothes, supplements, and other treatments, but spend little to nothing on improving themselves on the inside. It's more important to avoid wrinkles than to prevent negative habits from forming. It's a better investment to fix your sagging cheeks than to learn how to exercise restrained and unnecessary spending. Nobody will comment or even notice your deterioration of mental toughness and a growing preference for complacency over growth, but everybody will praise you for your new clothes. $10 for a book that can change your life is too expensive. $100 for another pair of jeans is a screaming deal. Your spending habits, including spending in the monetary sense and the investment of energy or time, reveal your true priorities. How much do you spend on your external appearance, and how much do you expend on developing your inner world? Is the proportion healthy, or do you find it hard to justify spending for personal growth, but never fail to invest in your superficial appearance? Day 49, On Obeying Lusts Bad men obey their lusts as servants obey their masters. 
Diogenes Laertius. A forbidden fruit is the sweetest. If it weren't so pleasant to submit to your urges, nobody would ever struggle with self-discipline. However, notwithstanding how much pleasure it can bring, it's important to see the temptation for what it is, your enemy on the path toward freedom. Obeying your lusts enslaves you, while rejecting them increases your freedom. The reward you'll get for not succumbing to your temptations will more than make up for the price you pay today for missing out on the instant gratification. Self-disciplined people may appear to some as if they were the ones being enslaved. After all, they're the ones whose lives are so limited, they don't get to eat junk food, they follow a strict routine, deliberately expose themselves to discomfort, and reject what society considers the spice of life, gluttony laziness, and engaging in other vices. What the critics fail to see is that, through the rejection of those temptations, the self-discipline become the masters of their lives. They serve the goals chosen by themselves instead of fleeting, spontaneous temptations. They choose to forego temporary satisfactions for deeper, more lasting ones later on. In the meantime, in the long haul, the people who fail to control their urges, or rather, don't even try to control them, fail to control their lives, manipulated by the temptations like a marionette.